Hi, <laughs> good afternoon. Today, I want to talk to you about the IoT, the Internet of Things. Before we start though, remember, if you click on the link below here, you can go to my homepage and you can find the script for this talk. You can also find questions, multiple choice and essay, and you can find answers and sample answers. And you can also listen to the MP3 talk of this. You can download all of those as Word documents if you want. Um, they're all there. Click on the link later. Okay, let's start. We're going to talk about the Internet of Things today. I'm sure you've heard about this. Let's start with well, what is it? Basically, the Internet of Things is any device that is connected to the Internet. For example, uh, my watch. My smartwatch is connected to the internet. But in your house, you probably have a range of devices which are internet connected. Um, for example, these days you can get smart fridges. A smart fridge is connected to the internet. What does it do? Well, it can tell you what's left inside your fridge and it can send you announcements, messages when you need to buy milk. Um, it can access the internet and find recipes for things that you have in your fridge. Um, at some point in the future, I expect Amazon will produce their own fridges and your smart fridge will be able to buy milk without even asking you. I'm not sure if that would ever happen, but it might. Uh, you can also get um, smart heating, smart lighting, all of these devices are connected to the internet. Uh, you can get a smart oven. On the way home, you can tell your oven, oven, heat up to 200 degrees, or you can have food in it ready to go. Oven, start. These are all internet connected devices, and these are part of the IoT, Internet of Things. Right now, 2020, there are approximately 7 billion internet connected devices. That means one for almost every person on the planet. Some countries have more, some countries have fewer, but generally about 7 billion devices. That's obviously going to change. Right now, uh, the major internet companies have, re have, have released um, home control devices. You've got the Amazon Alexa, the Google, Google, I don't know what it's called, the Google Google, <laughs> and um, Apple are just releasing, releasing their Siri, which is a home control center. Basically, these are devices you can talk to and you can access all of the other devices in your house through this one device. So for example, Alexa, no, not you, Siri. <laughs> so for example, Alexa, um, you can say, hey, Alexa, switch on the lights. Hey, Alexa, run my bath. Hey, Alexa, warm up the house a little bit. This is a control unit. And all the internet players, they want to get into these, of course, because if you control uh, people's houses, if you, if you are the device people use for, your, for their house, you can control their data, their information, and they're more likely to buy things from you. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the history of the Internet of Things. It's not a very big history because it's quite recent. The Internet, of course, started in about the 1960s. In the beginning, a few universities were connected, and that gradually spread around the world until the 1970s, when most countries were connected to the Internet. Obviously, at the time, it was quite slow, but it started to speed up. 1982, this is a picture of the world's first Internet-connected device. I think this is Stanford University. If I'm wrong, I'm going to write the correct university down here. And this Coca-Cola machine was connected to the internet and it would tell the owners of the machine the temperature of the drinks and it would tell them how many drinks were left. So they would know when to go and restock it. That's the first internet connected machine. Internet machine, well, uh, devices in general have become faster and smaller and much more capable thanks primarily to this thing here. This is the MOS transistor. MOS stands for Metal Oxide Silicon Transistor. I'm not entirely sure what it does. I've done a lot of research into it, trying to understand it, and I really can't. It's a switch. I've understood that much. It's a switch. You can switch it on or off, and it's very, very fast. <laughs> so it's very, very useful in um, circuit boards. In fact, every circuit board in the world has one. This is the most produced um, component in the world. Currently, 13 sextillion of these MOS transistors have been made. That's uh, 13 with 22 zeros after it, I think. So because this is getting smaller and uh, faster and more capable, devices can get smaller and faster and more capable, and it becomes, more, it becomes easier to connect them to the internet, to connect them to networks. You've probably heard about Moore's law. Moore's law says that computing power will double every two years and 
the price of computing power will halve every two years. And you've probably seen this arrow, it goes up like this. Uh, Moore's law, if Moore's law is true, uh, computing power is going to keep doubling. At some point, we're going to reach the singularity. And that's the point where it's doubling instantly. That's not instantly, I can't click instantly. And when we reach that point, um, computers have to make computers because humans can't produce things that quickly. Whether or not we can ever actually reach that point is uh, debated. I have no idea. Anyway, that's a different talk for a different day. Okay, let's talk about some of the benefits of the IoT. Benefits are quite obvious. Well, firstly, smart homes. You can connect all the devices in your home. It's very convenient for you. You don't have to go around diff uh, using different devices. It's very convenient. It's also much more economical and much more environmentally friendly. Um, you can analyze where you're losing heat. You can control things much more uh, easily. There will be huge benefits for our aging populations. Most developed countries have rapidly aging populations. Um, most countries like Japan, for example, by 2050, I think about 40% or even more people will be over the age of 65. So we're going to need a lot more care for the elderly. The IoT can do that. We can have connected health devices. We can have home help assistance. All these things can be connected to the Internet. Driverless cars, of course. Driverless cars are going to, going to be here soon. I mean, they are already here, but they're going to be rolled out big time, I think, within the next 10 years. Those cars will obviously be connected to a network, and that will be part of the Internet of Things. Each car will know what each other car is going to do. If uh, the car at the back, if the car at the front has an emergency stop, the car at the back will know about it at the same time as the car in the front. So it's going to make driving an awful lot safer. I think. <laughs> we also have health monitoring. We can have um, online health care. We can be connected to a doctor. We be, can be connected to a hospital. Um, the hospital can automatically monitor our health. If I have a heart attack now here, it's going to take a while before people find me. It's going to take a while for an ambulance to get here. If I'm connected to an automatic hospital, if I have a heart attack, they're going to know about it straight away and the ambulance will be on its way. And they will also know where I am because of GPS. That's all the Internet of Things. Um, IoT factories are going to become a thing of the future, a thing of the present. <laughs> An IoT factory will be much more <clears throat> economical, much more environmentally friendly because they will be connected to the market. Right now, you have to produce more so that you don't have a shortage in supply. If you are connected to the market, you know exactly how many products are being sold and exactly how many products are needed, and you can produce exactly the right number of products, which reduces the amount of waste. Um, factories that are connected as well will also be much more um, economical because each part will know what the other part is doing automatically, so they can adjust. Uh, agriculture. Agriculture, smart agriculture, part of the IoT, again, you're going to be able to produce for the market. You won't, be, you won't have huge surpluses. You won't have huge losses. Also, um, smart fields, smart farms are going to be able to rotate crops. They'll be, a, be able to analyze the weather at a much more <clears throat> high level of detail than we can at the moment. And they can adjust everything to fit that. They can adjust water. They can adjust whatever they need when it's needed because it's all connected through sensors. Drones, they can use drones to fly around the field and analyze everything as well. Um, the army, of course, the army is probably going to be into this much more quickly than we are in, civil, in civilian life because the army, they don't want to lose soldiers. They want as many automated machines as possible. If there is a World War Three, it's probably going to be machines versus machines. Um, if the army can save people by using automated machines, they will. And these automated machines connect to each other and that is part of the IoT, of course. I read somewhere that the army, the American army, already has an autonomous gun car. So this can drive around and it can shoot things. Right now it's controlled by a person somewhere back in America, but it does have the capability to select its own targets, which is a little bit scary, but it's a talk for another day, I suppose. Uh, education, of course. Education is going online, partly because of the coronavirus, but it's heading that way anyway and all parts of the school will be connected at some point as well. Right, let's look at a few problems. Um, obviously, one of the problems will be security. And countries might find that they have to separate themselves. 
So rather than having a worldwide internet, you might find you have country-specific internet, like China does at the moment. China is pretty much cut off from the rest of the world with the internet. So this video I'm making now, putting on YouTube, nobody in China will see it, I expect. If you're from China, write a comment down below. Probably nobody. So that might be one thing that happens. The second thing, of course, is hacking. Um, hackers will try and get into these networks and there are different things they could do. The first thing is um, data will be stored in the cloud. So the first thing they can do is they can hack into the cloud and they can steal data. That's happened quite recently. They've taken lots of documents and pictures and all these different things. Now that's going to be a constant game of catch up. The uh, cloud companies will always be trying to stay one step ahead of the hackers and security will have to keep pace with that. Another thing they can do is they can hack into networks, um, driverless cars again. If somebody can hack into a network and control a car, who knows what they could do. If they could control a whole city of cars, again, who knows what they could do. Um, power station grids, all these kind of networks, if they can hack into them, who knows what they can do. Um, they can initiate denial of service attacks or wide scale hacking by hacking into a lot of smaller devices and then sending out spam or sending out viruses throughout the world. One computer doesn't have enough computing power to attack something, but if they can create a network of slave machines or zombie machines, they can attack things uh, a lot more powerfully. Those things might happen. Um, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence isn't yet good enough to control all of these things. At some point it might be, but right now it's not advanced enough to control all of these things. And if it ever gets advanced enough, who knows what will happen. And also we are not advanced enough. This technology is very, very recent technology. It's just happening. And we are not educated, we are not trained in this kind of thing. So we don't know what we're doing yet. We're kind of making it up as we go along, almost. Um, and again, part of that is connected to the security. A lot of these companies that are making internet connected devices, they are not technology companies. For example, if Microsoft makes an IoT device, you can be pretty sure it's going to have high level security in it. However, if a toy company that makes dolls for children suddenly decides to make an IoT doll, that's not going to have security. That's not going to be very safe because they're not a technological tech, they're not a technology company. They're just trying to release it. And because these products are coming out as fast as possible, each company wants to produce the next technology, the next technologically advanced toy or device as fast as possible. So they are sacrificing security for speed here. So at some point in the near future, all of these unsafe devices are going to come back to bite us. Hopefully we'll learn as we go along though. Okay, uh, the future, what's gonna happen in the future? Well, right now there are seven billion devices. By 2025, it's predicted there will be 21 billion devices and that's gonna keep increasing. 5G internet, which is coming out now, will allow people to download at speeds of about a gigabyte a second. Again, 6G will be coming out by 2030 probably and then who knows, 7G, 8G, I don't know where they're gonna go. The faster the internet is, the faster the connection is, the more advanced the technology can be. So that's coming. What is going to happen in the future though? Your guess is as good as mine. I have absolutely no idea. The future is so uncertain. I think, in fact, I think the future now is more uncertain than it has been at any time in history. Things change so quickly these days that you cannot predict a year in advance. What technology is going to be here in 2021, 2025? I have no idea. There is absolutely no way of knowing. It's a very exciting time to be alive, but also a little bit scary. Anyway, is the IoT good or bad? You can argue both sides. However, it is coming. And the thing about technology, once we discover something, it's there. We cannot roll it back. So we have to learn to live with this. We have to work out some rules, some guidelines, and we have to work out what we're doing. Anyway. That's the IoT. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. Don't forget, click on the link below. You can go to my homepage and you can find the script for this talk. You can find questions, answers, and the MP3. Have a go. Uh, do some writing, do some listening. Your English will improve. Just keep trying. All right, thank you. See you next time. Goodbye.